wonderful name, that beautiful name, that powerful name, the name of Jesus. And even, O oh Lord, as we are gathered again in this place, we pray, O oh Father God, that your presence, O oh Lord God, encapsulate this place, fill this place, and once again reveal your revelation unto us, your word, your message, O oh God. Touch us once again. Set us free. Do miracles, O oh Lord God, and meet the needs of your people. Lord, hide me under the cross and let the name of Jesus be glorified in my life. As your messenger, as your humble servant, O oh God, I acknowledge my nothingness before thee. For you alone, O oh God, be glorified in this place. Be magnified. Be honored. Be worship, be praise, for your name is worthy. It could be a life-changing message. Ito po ang mensaheng maaaring magpabago ng buhay nating lahat sapagkat napaka, napaka makapangyarihan po ng, ng uh, sa, mga salita ng Diyos at ang uh, kalooban ng Diyos sa tekstong ito. Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 20. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. In other uh, version, in the region of the Gadarenes. Yun po yung, uh, uh, sa NIV po ako nagbabasa eh. But uh, in the King James Version, in the region of Gadarenes. Or the place is called Gadara. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. 
Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out at himself. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. And then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion. He replied, For we are many. And he begged Jesus again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and they drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in town and the countryside and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Verse 17, Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. So the man went away. And he began to tell in the Decapolis what happened to him, how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Amen? Amen. May kita po natin dito, ang pina, pina, pinamagatan ko po ang aking turo ngayon na the chains have been broken. No more living in the tomb. May kita po natin dito ang isang lalaki So verse 1, he went across the lake, ah, si Jesus po ay nagpunta across the lake to the region of Gadara. Gadara was a region doon po sa may uh, Galilee at dito po natin makikita, Gadara means wall. Sabihin mo natin lahat, wall. Wall speaks of something that separates us from God. And what could be that wall? Ang wall po na yan ay walang iba kundi ang kasalanan. It is sin that separates us from God. So Gadara stands for wall. Gadara stands for sin. It is something that separates us from God. At yan po ang kalalagayan ng lalaking ito. This man, if we will continue to read, so verse 2, sabi doon ganun, When Jesus got out of the boat, A man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. Saan po nang galing itong lalaki ito? He came from the tomb. Ano po ang ibig sabihin ng tomb? T-O-M-B. Libingan. Grave. He practically was living in the tomb. Sa sementeryo. Nakatira siya sa sementeryo all his life. Nakatira siya sa libingan. Saan ka nakakita? Sa bagay ngayon, maraming mga nakatira sa libingan, di ba? Ginagawang apartment, ginagawa pang tindahan. But even in the olden days, a certain man who was possessed and, you know, laden with the evil spirit was living in the tomb. And when he heard that a certain Jesus was in the area, he came out of the tomb. Umalis siya. Lumabas siya sa kanyang tirahan. Saan siya nakatira? sa libingan, sa tomb. Amen? He was practically living in the tomb. And what does tomb signify? What does tomb stand for? Amen? Maganda ba ang tomb? It is eerie. It is creepy. Amen? Nakakatakot. Why? Because it is dark in there. Amen? It is miserable in there. It is lonely in there. So a man without Christ in his life 
is practically living in the tomb. Amen? Marami pong mga tao ngayon ay akala nila buhay sila, masaya, mayaman, maraming pera, but just like this man, they are living in the tomb. And uh, the tomb is something that stands for darkness, for loneliness, for misery, for hopelessness. And out in the world, out there, there are many people who are just like this man. Amen? They are practically living in the tomb because they are in the dark. They are miserable. They are hopeless. They are living in pain. They are living in loneliness. Amen? And just like this man, when he heard that Jesus was in the area, he ran out of the tomb. He came out of the tomb. He came out of his darkness and misery. And he met Jesus. Amen? Pinuntahan niya si Jesus. Amen po ba? Amen. So makikita natin sa verse 2, ipinapakita dito ang buhay ng isang wala kay Kristo. A man that is not, the, a man that is without Christ. A man that is without Christ is practically living in the tomb. Amen? Now, they won't admit that. Bakit mo sinasabing ako ay nakatira sa libingan? Hindi mo ba alam na nakatira ako sa mansion? Hindi mo ba alam na nakatira ako sa Malibu Beach and I have all the mansions in the world? Amen? Hindi mo ba alam na ako ay famous and powerful and influential? Amen? But a man without Christ is practically living in the tomb. Whether they admit it or not, whether they believe it or not. Amen? A man without Christ is living in darkness, is living in misery, is living in pain and hopelessness and endless struggle. Just like this man. Okay, tingnan pa natin kung gaano klaseng buhay ang meron itong taong ito. Verse 3. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore. Not even with a chain. Amen. Ano pong sabi doon? The man was living in tomb and not only that he was living in tomb, he was in chain. But even the chains, he was able to break free from the chains and no one can bind him. No one can subdue him. Walang makakaya sa kanya. Amen? Nakakita na ba kayo ng mga taong sinukuan nyo na? Kasi sinabi nyo, hindi nyo na kaya? Amen? Maybe there are some people in your life that even how much you want to bind them, you want to imprison them, you want to put them in a cage, but even that is not enough. Amen? Just like this man, nobody can control him. Amen? The man has so many rules and regulations, many laws, amen? Laws are good because they put order in our society, but even rules and laws of society cannot, amen, change man, amen? Andun nga yung mga batas na yan, para ipakitang ang tao talaga matigas ang ulo eh, at hindi sumusunod sa batas, amen? Yung mga simple bagay na nakita na ng pula yung, pula yung, ah, uh, stoplight eh, sumisigi pa rin ng go, di ba? Kaya tuloy nagkakaroon ng mga ng mga aksidente sa ating mga kaparangan. Amen? So, even this man, anong sabi po ng ating binasa? No one could bind him anymore, even with a chain. Um, alam niyo po ba ibig, ang chain? A chain is made of, ano, plastic ba? Bakal. Hindi, bakal, di ba? But not even metal can, can can subdue him. Not even metals can uh, bind him anymore. For he had often been chained hand and foot. Can you imagine? Siya po ay nakagapos daw kamay at paa. He was often bound by chain, hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Amen? He was uncontrollable. Amen? He cannot be ruled over because he was too powerful. And later we will find why. Bakit, bakit ganun siya kalakas? Amen? That nobody, no man can subdue him. Amen? Tied down, sabi doon, he was chained hand and foot. Can you imagine? 
Siya po ay nakagapos nakakadena na sa kamay at paa but he often broke his chain because he was and sabi doon, no one he broke the irons on his feet and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Amen? We are looking here of a man that has no price in his life. Ganito po ang mga tao, wala ang Kristo sa buhay nila. Amen? They are bound by chains. They are bound by misery. They, were, they are living in darkness. They are living in the tombs. And uh, sabi ko nga kanina, we try. Marami tayong mga man's ways to be able to deal with this situation. Marami tayong mga mental hospitals, psychiatric wards, counseling. Amen? Lahat ng, ng uh, meron tayong mga penitentiary, meron tayong mga batas para magkaroon ng order sa buhay ng mga taong ito but not even not even the laws and rules of man are able to do that. Amen? Wala pong makakakaya nun. Why? Because the root of all these things is sin. Amen? Sabi ko kanina, this man, uh, Gadara is a region in, uh, doon po sa, doon po kung, kung saan nagpipreach si Jesus Christ ng kanyang mga sermon. And Gadara is a symbol of, of, of is a wall. Okay? And sabi ko nga kanina, and a uh, wall is something that is hard to break. But when Jesus came, He broke that wall. Why? That wall started when Adam and Eve rebelled against God. Nagsimula yan kay Adan at Eva nung sila ay nagrebelde sa Diyos. Sin came into the world. And Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. The penalty of sin is death. What is that death? Death na physical and death na spiritual. Death na ang ibig sabihin po ay kamatayan sa ating mga spiritual at mga physical. Adam and Eve live a life of, of fruitfulness sa Garden of Eden. But one day, they disobeyed God out of their own will. And because of that, sin came into this world. And that sin of Adam and Eve, kinopi rin natin. Di ba? Kinopi natin. Hindi da, huwag natin sisihin, ah, kasi si Adam at Eve nagkasala eh. Pero sa ating mga buhay, pag gumagawa tayo ng kasalanan, decision natin yun. Kinopia natin yung kasalanan ng ating mga ninuno na ginawa ni Adam at Eva. But, praise God, 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ offered His life on the cross of Calvary, that wall has been broken. That wall has been torn down. Amen? That wall has been finished. Na, 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 natapos na yun. Nawala na yun eh. Dahil binuk brinate ng ating Panginoon nung siya namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. He bridged the gap between man and God. Jesus Christ. Naunawan ho ba natin? He is the mediator between God and man and He restored that broken relationship. Naunawan ho ba natin? Now, this man, balikan natin yung sa verse 2 na ito. And in verse 3, this man, as a result of that sin, was also bound by misery and he was living practically dead. He was physically dead. Para siyang ano, zombie. Nabubuhay siya pero wala na talaga siyang buhay kasi makita mo naman naka nakatira siya sa libingan. Tapos, hindi lang yun. Eto, matindi. Kung babasahin natin sa verse 3 sabi doon verse 4 For he had often been chained hand and foot but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Ito, verse 5, Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Amen? Night and day, he was crying out. And what was he doing? He was mutilating himself. He was hurting himself. He was cutting himself. Amen? Kinakat niya yung kanyang sarili. Amen? Kinakat niya yung kanyang sarili. Kanya, sinusugatan niya yung kanyang sarili. He was hurting himself. In other words, this man is self-destructing. Amen? Para siyang bumbang malapit ng 
sumabog. May timeline ng buhay niya. Anytime he could, he could die. Because why? He was hurting himself. Nakakita na ba kayo ng mga taong ganito? That they are not in their right minds. That they are hurting himself, themselves. They are cutting themselves. Why? Because they are hopeless. Because they are in the dark. Because they are miserable. Amen? And nobody is able to give solution. Ginawa ng lahat. Ang pamilya dinala sa psychiatric center. Dinala sa, sa rehabilitation center. Dinala sa lahat ng albularyo. Pero wala pa rin nangyari. Bakit? Sapagkat ang taong ito ay wala kay Kristo. This is a complete illustration and description of a man without Christ. If your life is without Jesus Christ, ganito po ang, ang, ang itsura ng buhay ng tao. Amen po ba? Death has been his constant companion. He was living in the cemetery. He was living in the tomb. And, uh, you know, John 10.10, 10, hindi niya alam yun. What is John 10.10 10 says, I have come that, you, that they might have life and might have it more abundantly. Amen? Si Jesus Christ dumating daw para ano, magbigay ng buhay at di lamang basta buhay, kundi buhay na masagana. John chapter 10 verse 10. But they don't know that. Hindi po nila alam yun. This man, no one could bind him anymore. Not even with a chain. For he has been chained head and foot. But he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. The world is full of laws and regulations. But these laws and regulations never work. Amen? Marami tayong ini-impose para ang mga tao ay mag-behave. Pero hindi pa rin nag-behave ang tao. Why? Because they are without Christ. We, these laws are to control people. The laws are there to control people, to manipulate people, to let people behave in a certain manner. Pero kahit ang mga batas na ito, gaano man ito kakaganda ay hindi pa rin epektibo. Amen? Amen? This man, not even the laws of man can subdue him. But why? Because man cannot do anything. Laws cannot do anything about sin. Because sin is the root of all evil. Amen? Sin is the root of all misery. Sin is the root of all bounds and chains. Kagaya ng taong ito. The, and what is sin? Sin is rebelling against God. Sin is turning your back from God. From the, per, from, the, from the God who created you. From the God who showed you mercy. Sin is what? Rebellion. Sabihin mo natin lahat, rebellion. At ano raw po ang kabayaran ng kasalanan? Kamatayan. The, the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 And if I may go further, death means eternity in hell. Amen? Buhay na walang hanggan, hindi po sa langit, kundi sa impyerno. Eternity, spending eternity in hell. Now, Ulitin, ulitin ko yun sa verse 5. Sabi to, night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Amen? Ganun siya ka self-destructing. Amen? Many people, he would be, many people on the outside. Amen? They seem to be okay. They seem to be great. But deep inside, they are hurting. They are cutting themselves. Meron kong nabasa ng isang article nung isang araw. He was this young boy, 17 years old. And he said, I am a woman trapped in a man's body. He said, siya raw ay isang babae na nakulong sa katawan ng isang lalaki. In other words, hindi niya matanggap na siya ay lalaki. Ang sinasabi niya, siya ay babae. That's why he is not happy. And so one day, he confessed to his mother. Nag-iisang anak siya, 17 years old, matalino. Sabi niya, Mama, from now on, I want to change my life. I am Hope. I am not Eric. Ang pangalan niya kasi ay Eric. At ang mama po niya ay supportive. Amen? Tinolerate. Sabi niya, okay. 
I accept you for who you are. If you say that you are a man trapped, if you are a woman trapped in a man's body, then let's do something about it. And so he went through the process. He is, he is slowly changing and transforming from being a man to a woman. So he went through psychiatric counseling kasi magbabago siya ng pagkatauhan. He went through hormone shots, nagpapaturo para lumaki yung dibdib niya, magboses babae siya, at ang pinaka-ultimate na step na gagawin niya is to have a transplant. Amen? Vaginal transplant. Mula sa pagiging lalaki, magiging babae siya. In other words, he is changing his purse, his being a person. Amen? And for six months, ginagawa nila yun. Supportive yung mami, ha? Supportive yung mami. Supportive din yung school. Supportive din yung mga classmates. He was accepted by his peers, by his friends, by his teachers, by his school. Amen? And by his family. Si mami, tinolerate. Tinolerate yung kanyang uh, bisyo, yung kanyang gusto. Amen? So what would you ask? Amen? Ano pa bang mahihiling niya? Amen? So he went through the process of slowly transforming himself from airy to home. But one day, just a few weeks ago, this little boy named Eric killed himself. Is there a reason for him to kill himself? Eh, supportado naman eh. Walang problema. Di ba? Lahat, hormonal shots, ultimately vaginal transplant. Everything seems to be going his way. Everything seems to be good and great. But one day, last few weeks ago, he killed himself and he left a suicide note and said, Mommy, I cannot take this life anymore. I am sorry. But I have to kill myself. Ganun po ang sinabi niya sa kanyang suicide note. Bakit? Isuportado naman siya. Tinanggap naman siya. Is there a reason for him to kill himself? He was well supported on what he wants to do with his life to transform from being a man to a woman. Amen? From being an addict to hope. Bakit? Bakit? At bakit? Amen? The mother could not comprehend. Hindi niya maintindihan. Hindi niya matanggap. Napakasakit po sa kanya. Sapagkat siya ay ina na tinanggap yung gusto ng kanyang anak. Kaya't walang dahilan para siya magpakamatay. Amen? Pero bakit? Sapagkat sa puso ni Eric, amen, alam niya na siya ay sumusuway sa kalooban ng Diyos. Amen. And until you realize that you are not obeying the will of God, the purpose of God for your life, you will never have peace. Even if the people around you condole and agree and support to what you are doing, kagaya ng batang ito, Amen? He wanted to transform himself, but he knows deep in his heart, it is not the right thing to do. He was never at peace. Kahit na nagta-transform na siya from Eric to being a hope, he was never at peace. Amen po ba? Ganun po ang tao. Hanggat hindi mo na susunod ang kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay mo, kahit na mangyari yung gusto mo. Amen? Sa pag-iisa mo, alam mo, hindi ka payapa, you will never be in perfect peace. Why? Because you are un, you are not doing the perfect will of God in your life. You are still in rebellion. Amen? You are you are not accepting who you are, kung sino ka, ayon sa pagkakalalang ng Diyos sa iyo. Amen po ba? Kagaya ng batang ito, kahit na lahat nangyayari ayon sa nais niya, alam niya sa bandang uh, pinakakaibutura ng puso niya na something is wrong. Amen? And he will never be at peace. And so, in the end, nakaka it is just very tragic because he had to go through that. Amen? Kinakailangan pa niyang magpakamatay. And this man, so verse 5, night and day, he was cutting himself with stones. Amen? Kung unti-unti pagpapakamatay ang ginagawa ng taong ito. 
Unti-unting uh, pagsiself-destruct ang ginagawa ng taong ito. Because night and day, in the hills, he was crying. Amen? He was wailing. Amen? He was He was in misery and he was crying out and cutting himself with stones. Amen. Are you slowly dying? Marahil nakikinig ka ngayon at sinasabi mo, bakit ganun? I have all the fattest bank account. I have I live in a mansion. I have all the beautiful cars in this world but I am not happy. I am miserable. Just like that man sa Mark chapter 5, I am crying out, wailing out night and day. And I am self-destructing. It is only for a matter of time that I will die. Just like this man. Amen? Crying out night and day, cutting himself, hurting himself. Amen? Putting himself, subjecting himself in self-inflicted pain. Ganun po ang nangyayari sa kanya. And maybe may, marami sa inyo ang nanonood at nangikinig ngayon. Kagaya ng taong ito, You are miserable. You are crying out. You are wailing out because you are hopeless. Kagaya ng Eric na yun, you are, ipinipilit mo isang bagay na hindi pwedeng mangyari. You are changing what God has planned for you. And you are self-destructing. Man, come out of your tomb and meet Jesus. Ituloy po natin. Sabi doon sa ating binasa, When you are crying out, kagaya ng, la, ng, taong, it, ng taong ito, Satan is there. Andun si Satan, and he will give you false hope. Sasabihin niya, ako ang kailangan mo para mawala ka sa misery. Amen? Go out. Find your friends. Amen? Tumira ka ng marijuana, ng cocaine, ng, ng shabu. Amen? Go to clubs. Ubusin mo lahat ng clubs dyan. At ikaw ay magpakasasa. Amen? Satan will deceive people and say, you will find peace if you, kapag tumira ka ng cocaine. Amen? You will be in a great high. So, para po sa, kina, para po sa hinahanap na peace, si Satan magpapadala ng religion, ng dogma, ng, 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 ng iba't ibang mga uh, katuroan. Do you, do you want peace? Go to yoga classes. Magkakaroon ka ng peace. Magkakaroon ka ng self-concentration. Magkakaroon ka ng self-found peace. Amen? Sasabihin ni Satan, gusto mo ba ng peace? Pumunta ka sa India. Find yourself. At mag mag uh, and convert yourself to Buddhism or Hinduism or Confucianism. And he will give you different kinds of dogmas and say, this is peace. Gusto mo ba ng love? Maraming tao, bakit sila miserable? Why are they crying out in the night, in the middle of the night? Because they want love. Amen? Gusto, lang, gusto, ng pag, gusto nila ng pag-ibig. Amen? Kaya naman si Satan magpapadala ng false love. Amen? Perversion. Lust of the flesh. Akala ang love ay yung makipagtalik ka sa kung sino-sinong babae at lalaki. Amen? Sa kasahuli, AIDS ang, ang, ang makukuha. Amen? If people are finding love, magpapadala siya ng mga maling tao, false boyfriend, false comfort. Amen? Ganun po si Satan. Now, if many people are also wailing and crying out because they don't have self-worth, wala silang, ang tingin nila sa sarili nila, basura. Meron pa ba akong silbi? I'm such a, wala na akong self-worth. I have no dignity left in me. Wala na akong respeto sa sarili ko because I've been through a lot. Amen? And Satan will condemn you. Satan will say, Oh, wala ka na nga bang self-worth? Ito. Ito ang kailangan mo. Magpo-offer siya ng mga maring, maring mga bagay. Material possessions. Amen? Comfort from false people. Pero isa lang po alam natin solution dyan, di ba? Si Jesus. And then people who are, you know, crying out, feel that they are dead. This man is practically a living dead. Amen? Siya po ay isang buhay na patay. Patay na buhay. Whatever you may call it. He was living in the tomb. And maybe he wanted to kill himself pero hindi siya mamatay-matay and the, the only thing left is for him to die physically. But his life 
is a living dead. It's a living hell. Amen po ba? Amen. But one day, he heard about the name of Jesus who is in Gadara. And in verse 6, when he saw Jesus from a distance, the, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. Amen? When he saw Jesus on the boat, he ran and what did he do? He fell on his knees. This is the first time that this man is meeting Jesus. Amen? Hindi niya kilala to eh. But he knew what to do. Amen? Ano po ang ginawa niya? Tumakbo. Hindi na siya nagpatumpik-tumpik. Amen? Marami pong krisyano kaya nanguhuli sa pansitan kasi ang bagal kumilos. Pero ito, tumakbo. Sabihin natin na tumakbo. tumakbo. Kaya kapag ang, ang, ang Lord ay nagtatawag ng mag, magpo-pour out siya ng blessing, dapat tumatagbo tayo. Amen? At hindi lamang siya tumakbo. What did he do? He fell on his knees. He fell on his knees. Amen? Wow. And then, ang sabi po doon, ituloy, ituloy po natin, Mark chapter 5, verse 6. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees on him. And he shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus? Son of the Most High God, swear to God that you won't torture me. Sino na nagsasalita? Yung man from the tomb, di ba? He was saying, what do you want from me, Jesus? I swear to God that you came to torture me. Dumating ka ba para i-torture ako? Sabi niya. But Jesus said to him, come out of this man, you evil spirit. And then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion. He replied, For we are many. He was talking to this man from the tomb. Pero kaya pala, buhay na patay at patay na buhay ang taong ito sapagkat he is laden, he is loaded with evil spirits. And those evil spirits knew exactly that the presence of God is in Gadara. And so when this, when he came, he fell on his knees. You know what? Even demons recognize who is to be knelt with. Amen? Kung sino dapat ang niluluhuran. <laughs> Alam ng demonyo kung sino ang niluluhuran, di ba? Amen? Kaya ng demonyo, tagpatira pa siya. He acknowledged and he said, What do you want with me, Jesus? Son of the Most High God. He acknowledged, even the demons acknowledged that Jesus is the Son of the Most High God. Did you come to torture me? And Jesus said, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. What is your name? My name is Legion, for we are many. Ang Legion po, kung titignan po natin, is sa Roman army, it is the biggest Sa Roman army in the in the olden days, it is the biggest unit of, of, of the army. Meron itong mga more or less 5,000 fighting men. Okay, 5,000 fighting men. And this man does not only have one demon possessing him, but he has a legion. Amen? Pag sinabi mong legion, it is translated to multitude. Marami. Sabi niya, I am legion for we are many. Nagpapakilala siya. Alam niyo po ba ng mga demonyo may mga pangalan? Amen? And Jesus was talking to the demons and the evil spirit and said, Who are you? At nagpakilala, sabi niya, I am legion for we are many. Marami. Kaya po pala itong mamang ito ay kaawa-awa ang kalalagayan. Hindi lamang siya pinananganan ng isang demonyo, kundi maraming demonyo. Kaya ganun po ka miserable ang buhay niya. He was a living dead. He was living in the tomb. He was in darkness. And he's, he was hopeless. Totally hopeless. Why? Sapagkat siya po ay kontrolado ng maraming masamang espiritu. 
But Jesus said, and he begged Jesus again and again. Sino po yung nag-beg? Yung demons, yung mga demons. The legion begged Jesus again and said to them, and he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. Sabi ng mga demonyo, wag, wag po kami pahirapan. Do not send us out of the area because the legion's name that Jesus might, you know, ikukulong sila sa abyss and they will never come out. Pero hanggang ngayon may mga demonyo pa rin kasi ano kinakailangang mangyari eh, meron. Pero may oras din na sila ay totally will be chained forever in the abyss at hindi na po sila makakalabas. Pero ngayon, nandyan pa rin sila. Ngayon, ito, ito naman ang... Ano yung makukuha yung lesson dito? That you are above all demons in this world. Amen? Because you have the name of Jesus. <laughs> These demons recognize and they fell at the feet of Jesus. These demons were trembling in fear because Jesus was in the area. You carry the name of Jesus and demons should tremble before you because you carry the name of Jesus. It should not be the other way around. Hindi dapat tayo yung nanginginig, kundi ang mga demonyo ang nanginginig sa atin. Hello? Hello? Nakuha niyo ba yung nangyari? Nakita niyo yung nangyari? Nanginginig yung mga demonyo, nagpatira pa, nakikiusap, huwag mo kaming pala palayasin, huwag mo kami, saan mo kami dadalhin? Did you come to torture us? Sabi ng mga demonyo. Amen! Pero anong sabi ni Jesus? Sabi ni ganun na, uh, A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. And the demons begged Jesus, Send us among the pigs! Allow us to go into them! Sa nakita ng mga demonyo, may mga baboy doon, around 2,000 pigs were being herded in the area. And so, sabi ng mga demonyo, nag-request pa, special request, pwede ba huwag mo kaming dalhin sa abyss? Don't chain us forever in the abyss. Send us to the pigs. Send us to the pigs. Amen? Kaya huwag kayo magtataka, meron mga tao hindi kumakain ng baboy. Hello? Nag-gets niyo ba yun? Okay. Ako matagal na ako hindi ko makain ng baboy. And he begged Jesus again and he said He gave them uh, The demons begged Jesus Send us among the pigs and allow us to go into them. And Jesus gave them permission and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd about 2,000 in number rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and they were drowned. Amen? At the command of Jesus, Jesus said, come out of that man. Amen? Not just one demon, but a legion of demons, a multitude of demons. Amen? He, no, no number was given by the Bible, but it is a big number, a large number. Kaya kawawa tong taong ito eh. But Jesus set him free. One day Jesus said, Come out of that man and go to the pigs. And the pigs ran out into the steep cliff and they dove into the lake. And they all drowned. Amen po ba? Siya po ay lumaya, pinalaya ng Panginoon. Saan po pumunta yung mga demonyo? Sa mga baboy. Amen? Kaya mayroong mga ibang tao hindi kumakain ng baboy. Kasi naaalala nila itong Mark 5. Baka ikaw pag gusto mo na rin i-give up kumain ng baboy. Dahil kapag nakakita ka ng baboy, naaalala mo, doon pala pumunta yung legion. Hello? Doon pala pumunta yung legion at sila po ay pumunta sa lake and they all drowned. And that is the beginning of freedom. And that is the day of liberty. And that is the day when this man from the tomb was set free. Amen? Amen? Because Jesus had mercy on him. Send us among the pigs and allow us to go to them. And Jesus gave them permission. And so the evil spirits came out of the man 
and went into the pigs and they dove into the lake and they were all drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in town and countryside and the people went out to see what had happened. Amen. In the face of many people, in the eyes of many people, they saw this. Lahat ng nangyari ito. They saw this man. Nakalat-kalat lang. Amen. Madalas nakahubad, naked, running around. Hurting himself. Torturing himself. Maybe nakakita na kayo ng mga ganitong tao. Di ba? Sa susunod na makakita kayo ng mga ganitong tao, kagaya ni Jesus, you can you can set them free. Amen po ba? Marami po mga tao ganito na sila po ay nangangailangan. And th this this day was the moment that this man has been waiting for. All his life he was living in the tomb, in chain and bound by sin, by the evil spirits. But one day, Jesus unbound him. Kagaya sa Daniel chapter 3 verse 25, nakita ng mga tao, anong nangyari? Si Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego at ang mga kabataan, naglalakad sila sa apoy and the chains have been set free. Nawala po yung mga chains sa kanila and there was a fourth man walking with them in fire and that was Jesus. Amen? Jesus has set them free. Sabi po sa Ephesians chapter 6, 12 to 13, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities of darkness. Kaya po, may mga taong sa, sa tingin natin, uncontrollable. Hindi lang, si, hindi po sila yun, kundi merong evil spirit behind them. Amen? Kaya dapat we know how to take control kagaya ng ating bit ng ating pinag-aaralan ngayon. There are some situations in life that it is not just an ordinary scene but there is a, an evil spirit that is behind it. Kaya mahirap i-manipulate, mahirap i-control, mahirap na i-bound kagaya ng tao nito. Amen? But there is no powerful chain that cannot be unbound by Jesus. Amen po ba? Kagaya ng taong ito, he was set free. Amen? For all his life, he's been suffering. But one day, liberty has come. What happened? Ano pong nangyari sa taong ito? Ituloy po natin. Then the people began to plead with Jesus. Wow. So verse 17, okay, those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon possessed man and told about the pigs as well and then the people came and began to plead with Jesus to leave <laughs> nakuha niyo po ba? yung mga tao nakita nila yung ginawa ni Jesus lumaya ang isang inaalihan ng masamang espiritu that has been bound for so long pero nung lumapit sila ano pong ginawa nila? nakiusap sila kay Jesus, pwede ba umalis ka na? Hindi mo alam kung natakot ba sila? O ano ba? Bakit gano'n ang reaction nila? Amen? Maraming gano'n. Nakakita sila ng himala. Pero hindi pa rin sila naniniwala. Pinapaalis pa rin nila. Amen? Yung mga mensahero ng Panginoon. Why? Sapagkat alam nila sila na ang susunod. Alam nila sila na ang susunod na palalayain at bibigyan ng Panginoon ng ultimato. Amen? And these, these people, alam nila eh na merong nangyari, merong naganap. Something good, something great, something miraculous has happened. But what did they do? They asked Jesus to leave. Some people could be so ungrateful. Amen? Nakakita, they have seen a miracle, they have seen a good thing, but they still won't believe and they will say, okay, that's good, pero go. You, we don't need you. Hindi namin kayo kailangan. Doon kayo sa kabilang ibayo mag-Bible study. Doon kayo sa kabilang baryo mag-evangelize. After all that they have seen, ha? after all the miraculous things that they have seen, they still won't believe. Hindi pa rin nila tinanggap si Jesus and they ask Him to leave. Amen? Marami pong tao ganyan. Nakakita ng magandang bagay. Nakakita ng himala. 
nakakita ng mga dakilang bagay pero hindi pa rin maniniwala. Amen? They would still reject Jesus. They would still reject salvation. They would still reject the grace of God. Amen? Amen? Kalakaran na talaga kahit pala noong unang mga panahon meron ng ganon. Amen po ba? So may kita po natin what happened. Ituloy po natin sa verse 18. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him but said, Go home to your family and tell them much the Lord. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Amen po ba? Ano po ang sabi nung, nung, nung mama nito? Sabi niya ganun. I want to go with you. Hinabol niya sa boat si Jesus Christ. I want to come with you. You have done a good thing to me. Amen? But, pero bago yun, balik mo na ako sa 15. Pang conclusion ko na pala yun. <laughs> sa verse 15, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Okay? So may kita natin dito yung nangyari, di ba? Yung chronology of events, yung mga demonyo, pinalaya si Jesus, come out! Sabi niya doon sa tao. At lumabas yung mga demonyo, a legion of demons went to the pigs and they were drowned into the lake. Hello! Meron ba kayong ganitong kapangyarihan at kakayanan? Kagaya ng ginawa ni Jesus, if someone is demon possessed, will you be bold and strong enough to say, come out in the name of Jesus? and go to the pigs and be drowned forever into the lakes. Amen? Magagawa nyo rin ba yan? Naniniwala ba kayo na kaya nyo gawin yun? Amen? Amen. Kapag meron kayong kapitbayan na inaalihan ng demonyo, dapat kayo, kasi kayo nakakala kung paano magpalaya. Hindi yun nakukuha sa mga wisik-wisik. Hindi yun nakukuha sa mga krus. Hindi yun nakukuha sa mga orasyon at dasal. Amen? Paano magpalaya ng mga taong napupossess ng mga demonyo? How can you set free somebody who is oppressed and possessed by the devil? Amen? Hindi po sa mga holy water, hindi po sa mga kagaya ng pinapalabas ng the exorcist, ng mga cross na malalaki, hindi po sa mga paulit-ulit na dasal at orasyon, mapapalaya mo ang isang tao sa pangalan ng Panginoon. Amen. You can command the legion of demons to come out in the name of Jesus and they shall be set free. Why? Because you carry the name of Jesus. You are a child of God. You have the authority. The devil is under your feet. The book of Romans says. Amen. Amen. Now, do you realize that? How powerful you can be. Amen. That you can set people free. Amen. Many of them are suffering in mental institutions. All kinds of medicines and science and psychiatry has been applied to them but they have never been set free. Why? Because there is more to what their condition is. Amen. The origin and the root is sin. 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 Amen. Kaya puntahan niyo sila. Ipag-pray. Patanggapin kay Jesus. Pagsisihin ang kasalanan at palayain sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen? Kagaya ng nangyari sa mamang ito. He has been in misery for so long. Amen? And many people, oppression and depression and hindi natin ito sinasawa ng bahala. We are not saying that oppression, depression are not real. They are real. Kasi nga, meron nga ngayon mga campaign against, a campaign towards information na depression is real. Kaya nga may mga nagsisuicide, hindi ho ba? Because they have been suffering for too long and they cannot contain it anymore. Amen? So you are just one step behind them. Why don't you step forward and reach out to them? 
Amen. Because it's in the power of your hands. You can lay your hands upon them and they shall be free. You can lay your hands upon them and they can be set free. Amen po ba? Just like this man from Gadara, from Gadara has experienced. Amen po ba? Amen. Ngayon, what happened to this man? Kung bitinan po natin, so verse 15, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there beside him. Amen. Ano na pong nangyari sa kanya? Number one, sitting. Siya po ay nakaupo na. Siguro nung unang panahon, siya po ay nagpatakbo-takbo, naglalakad, walang saplot. He was all naked, running around the city, running around the Decapolis, running around the place. Amen? Because he was not in his right mind. But this time, they found him sitting beside Jesus. Sabihin nyo natin lahat, sitting. sitting. Now, he is sitting. Siya po ay nakaupo na. Hindi na po siya maligali. Siya po ay stable na. Siya po ay at last umupo. Nag-behave. Amen? Nung una hindi mong mapaupo. Kasi parang hilong-talilong na paikot-ikot, takbo ng takbo ng walang saplot. But this time, people found him sitting be beside Jesus. Sabihin mo natin lahat, sitting. You are all sitting down and you are all behaved. Ganyan po. Amen? He was sitting beside Jesus. He was very peaceful. Sabi na natin lahat, peaceful. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 21. Amen? Peace is found in Jesus. And this man, for a longest time, he did not know what peace means. But this time, he was sitting. Amen? He was peaceful. He was secure. He felt so secure be beside Jesus. And he was so content. Siya po ay contento. Hindi na po siya nagsisisigaw. Hindi na po siya nagwawala. Hindi na po siya nagpapalabas at nag -eskandalo. He was not creating a sin. He was sitting. Amen? Amen. He was at peace. He was content. He was secure because he was sitting beside Jesus. Amen? Next, ano po yung tura niya? Aside from he was sitting beside Jesus at hindi siya naglalagalag, at hindi siya nagtatatakbo, at hindi siya nagwawawala. He was, sabi doon, he was dressed. Siya po ay cloth, dressed. Siya po ay may saplot na. Amen? Whereas nung wala pa siya sa sarili niyang uh, katinuan ng isip, siya po ay naked, running around, but this time he was dressed, sitting beside Jesus. Amen? When you come to surrender your life to Jesus, He will dress you with His righteousness, with His love, with His peace. He will clothe you with His grace and mercy. And this man found exactly just what he has been looking for in his life. Amen po ba? He was clothed, he was dressed. Before he was naked, nakedness is when you are in sin. Amen? But now he was fully clothed and is fully dressed with the righteousness of Christ. Amen? Sin has been gone away. Why? Because the righteousness of Jesus clothed him. Amen? Sa buhay din po natin lahat, minsan we feel so condemned because we know that we have not lived up, you know, to the standards of our God. But the righteousness of Jesus is always there. Alam niyo po, pag tumatay ako dito sa pulpito, lagi kong sinasabi, Lord, clothe me with your righteousness because I am not worthy. I am not even worthy and I tremble if I, you know, kapag nagbipitaw ako ng mga mensahe at nagbipitaw ako ng mga salita ng Diyos na nakakangimig ng laman. But I always find refuge in the righteousness of Jesus. And I always say, hide me behind the cross so that it is not me but you, O Lord, that shall be glorified and seen. 
At sa buhay po ng lalaking ito, he experienced being fully dressed and clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. Meron ka bang condemnation? Meron ka ba sa heart mo na feeling mo hindi mo mapatawad sarili mo? Because you have done something gray, grave. Meron kang nagawang hindi, kahit ikaw hindi mo mapatawad ang sarili mo. Pero kagaya ng lalaking ito, ay di ko alam, maybe meron, may pinagmulan to eh. May pinagmulan. Bakit nagka, nag, na, 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 nagkakaroon ng mga problema ganito sa kaisipan ng mga tao? Merong pinagmulan, merong root. And I don't know kung ano yung istorya ng, ng taong ito. But in the end, siya po ay lumaya. Siya po ay binalutan ng katuwiran ng ating Panginoon. Okay, kung itutuloy po natin sa verse 15, ito yung mga gusto kong i-emphasize. He was sitting behind, beside Jesus, dressed, fully dressed, okay? Sitting behind, beside Jesus and in His right mind. Amen? Doon po sa ating binasa sa verse 15. Now, He is in His right mind. Amen? Ang Panginoon po, sabi doon sa 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, His gift is a sound mind. God's gift is a sound mind. Are you tortured? Are you condemned? Do you have something that is bothering you all your life, in your mind? Maraming mga tao, bakit hindi ako makatulog? Hindi ako makatulog. Lahat, ginawa ko na. Uh, nagkaroon na ako ng mga sessions sa, psych sa, sa psychiatrist. Nagkaroon na ako ng counseling. Hindi pa rin ako makatulog. Para akong zombie. Meron akong insomnia. Nag-acupuncture na ako. Ginawa ako na lahat. Pero hindi pa rin ako makatulog. Bakit? Sapagkat meron po silang upi-ugat. Amen? Kagaya ng, ng demoniac na ito sa Mark chapter 5, if only people will know how to submit their will, their mind and thoughts, submit it to God, God will cleanse it. And God will set it free. Kagaya ng demoniac na ito, his mind was restored. Amen po ba? His mind was restored. And, the, and, and verse 15 is saying now that he was in his right mind. Amen? Possible ba? Is it possible to cure those who are mentally ill? Yes, it is. Just like this man. He was set free. His, he was in his right mind. Now he is in his sound mind. Sabi nila irreversible daw. Kasi raw ang mga mentally ill ay minana yan. Genetics yan. You know, it has been through generation. Kaya nga it has been through generation. It is a curse. And you can reverse the curse. Because the power is in your hands to reverse the curse. Amen po ba? Meron ba kayong mga kamag-anak na ganito? Meron ba kayong mga kamag-anak na ganito na hopeless? Makikita po natin kagaya sa, sa lalaking ito. He was possessed by evil spirit. And because the root is that they are possessed by evil spirit, mag oh, maganda po yung managagawa ng medisina, ng syensya, ng mga, ng mga counseling and psychiatry, but The bo at the bottom of, of it all, ang pinaka-ugat po nito ay kagaya dito sa Mark chapter 5. There's a legion of demons possessing these people, controlling their minds, so that they are not in their right minds. Pero praise God, sa so verse 15, what was the result when Jesus met this man? And this man met Jesus. The people found him when they came to Jesus. They found him sitting beside him, fully clothed and dressed, and in his right mind. Amen po ba? Is it possible to cure mentally ill people? It is, is it possible to cure and heal obsessed, depressed, and possessed people? Amen. Pwede po. And paano ang gagawin? Magpapaalbularyo ka ba? Tatakutin mo ba sila ng mga cross? Wiwisikan mo ba sila ng mga holy water? Dadasalan mo ba sila ng mga paulit-ulit na orasyon? Ano po nakita natin? Jesus said, come out 
of this man and go to the pigs. And right there and there, instantly, the man was delivered and he was transformed and he was restored to be the man that he was supposed to be. Amen? And, makikita po natin, doon, kung itutuloy po natin, what the sound mind means. A sound mind means it is a spiritual mind. Amen? Before, this man has no idea what is spiritual. Amen? Wala po siyang alam because he was living in darkness. A spiritual man is loaded with the spiritual values. A spiritual mind is loaded with the spiritual things. Amen? Spiritual ba yung utak natin, yung isip natin? Anong laban yan? Ano yung naglalaro dyan? What kind of mind do you have? Do you have a spiritual mind or a lustful mind? What is playing in your thoughts? What is playing in your mind? What is occupying your mind? If your mind is full of trash, of lust, of, wor of worldly flesh and worldly things, then spiritual things has no... Wala po dyan, wala pong lugar ang spiritual na bagay dyan. Kaya ang mangyayari, lahat ng ginagawa mo, puro kamunduhan. But the Lord is saying to us this day, let our minds be, become spiritual minds. What is a sound mind? Kagaya doon, sabi doon sa binasa natin, the man was in his sound mind or in his right mind. A sound mind means a spiritual mind. A sound mind means a rational mind. Pag sinabi mong rational, marunong kang magdesisyon ng tama sa mali. A rational mind is able to decide on what is right. Choosing what is right over what is wrong. Amen po ba? That is a rational mind. And a sound mind means a rational mind. Making the right choices. Amen? Amen? Sa buhay po natin, punong-puno po tayo ng pagpili, di ba? Life is a choice. Life is full of many choices. And what are the choices that you have made in your life? What kind of choices have you made? Amen? And what kind of choices will you make in the future? A sound mind means being able to become rational. Choosing the right choices in life. Amen? Pinipili mo kung ano yung tama. Kung alam mong mali, hindi mo pipiliin. Amen po ba? At nagsisimula yan sa mga simpleng bagay. Alam mong ang deliver yan. Huwag mong papatulan. Hindi yan ang para sa'yo. Amen? Huwag mong gawing boyfriend kasi unbeliever. Huwag mong gawing girlfriend. Huwag mong ligawan kasi unbeliever. Choices. Being rational. That is be having a sound mind. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen, Amen po ba? Amen. What is being rational? Choosing to attend church on Sunday. That is rational. Amen po ba? Ngayon, you are given some choices. O, oh, anong pipiliin mo? Sasama ka ba sa excursion ng pamilya mo? Sunday yun eh. Ang sarap kaya mag-beach. Ang sarap kaya mag-lakwacha. Ang sarap kaya mag- mag- mag-, mag maging uh, pumunta sa mga resort. Amen? Kasi summer. Ang sarap mag loop, -loop sa tubig. Amen. Amen? But be, having a sound mind means choosing the right choice. And which, and you, if you are faced with the choices in, in front of you, amen, choose what you are supposed to choose, amen? And choose God, amen po ba? Amen po ba? Amen. Choose Sunday worship. Okay, what, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng having a sound mind, kagaya ng nakuha ng lalaking ito when he met Jesus? Aside from having a spiritual mind, having a rational mind, a sound mind is having an active mind. Amen? Hindi yung tutulog-tulog na mind. Amen? Na walang gustong gawin, kundi nagpapaka sasa lang sa mga walang kwentang bagay. An active mind is an, a mind that is able to analyze things. Amen? Pinag-aaralan niyang mabuti. Hindi niya hinahayaang ang media ang nagdidesisyon para sa kanya o ang TV na papalit niya sa TV ang nagdidesisyon para sa kanya o ang ibang tao ang nagdidesisyon para sa kanya. A sound mind is having an active mind. A mind that knows how to analyze, how to study, how to 
deeply have an insight of things. Amen po ba? That is an active mind. Amen? Hindi yung mga mind na natutulog sa pansitan. Amen? At number four, what is a sound mind? A sound mind is a dedicated mind. Amen? Dedicated yan. Kahit ano pang mangyari, pipiliin yan si Jesus. A dedicated mind chooses to serve God. A dedicated mind chooses to love God. A dedicated mind chooses to be committed to His God. Amen? So, this man, this man, this demoniac from Gadala, has found a sound mind. Amen? He did not only found security and peace and contentment in the presence of beside sitting Jesus, he was not only clothed in the righteousness of Jesus, but he found a restored sound mind, a right mind. And a right mind and a sound mind is a spiritual mind, a rational mind, an active mind, and a dedicated mind. Amen po ba? Meron po ba tayo nun? Kung wala, I, 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 ano natin, i-offer natin yung mind natin sa Lord mamaya. So that we will have a dedicated, spiritual, rational, and dead, and uh, active mind. Okay. Ngayon, bas balikan na natin kanina yung sinabi ko, verse 18 to 19. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him, but Jesus did not let him and said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, how he had shown mercy on you. This man has has been delivered, has been set free. Nakasya po ay nakaranas ng kalayaan. He has been set free. And the only thing he wants is to be beside Jesus. He wants to follow Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Gusto niya sumunod kay Jesus. Kaya hinabol niya doon sa boat at ang sabi niya, I want to go with you. Can I come with you? But Jesus said, no. Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has shown mercy on you. Amen. Amen? God wants this man who has found another chance at life. Nagkaroon siya ng pangalawang pagkakataon sa buhay. Now, he has a purpose. Now, he has a reason to live. Before he wants to die, he was cutting himself. He was hurting himself. Kulang na lang, magpakamatay siya, magsuicide siya. Because he was so hopeless. He was full of depression and struggle and pain. He wanted to kill himself. Night and day, he was wailing. He was crying out. He was in misery. And he wanted to commit suicide and kill himself. And that's what he did. He was cutting himself with stone, the word says. But this time, when God has set him free, has clothed him with righteousness and restored his sound mind, all he wanted to do was to follow Jesus. But Jesus said, No! Now that you have found a purpose for living, go! Go home and go back to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has shown mercy on you. <laughs> Bakit tayo gumagaling? Bakit tayo pinapalaya ng Diyos? Why do we receive miracles? To keep our mouth shut? To hide ourselves in the tomb once again? Why? Why does God show mercy to us? So that we can go back and tell people how God has shown mercy on us. Kaya nga pag testimony portion, there is no reason for us not to come in front and say, God, you have been so good to me. I testify of the glory and mercy of God upon my life. Amen? Kaya dapat nauna po tayo dito nagpapatutuo lagi. Ito po ang nasumpungan ng taong ito. Binigyan siya ng bagong pagkakataon sa buhay at binigyan siya ng bagong misyon. Ano po yung misyon niya? Bumalik ka sa baryo mo, sa barangay mo, sa komunidad mo, sa eskwelahan mo, sa trabaho mo, at sabihin mo sa kanila ang ginawa ko sa iyo. Go back to where you belong. To go back to your own people and tell them what I've done for you. Tell them what I've done for you. Amen? Amen. We receive miracles not to keep our mouth shut. We receive miracles so that we can open our mouth and 
say glory to God. He has shown mercy upon me. He has restored my mind. Once I was living in the tomb. I was living in darkness. I was living in the dungeon. I was practically dead. But God has brought me back to life. And now I will not keep my mouth shut. I will go back. I will go home to my own people and tell them God has shown me mercy. And as God has shown me mercy, He can show you mercy. Amen po ba? Ano po yung bagong mission ng taong ito? I-evangelize niya yung kanyang mga kasamahan. I-evangelize niya yung kanyang mga kaeskwelahan. I-evangelize niya yung kanyang mga kasama sa sementeryo. Marahil hindi lang siya ang ganito. Marami pa sa kanilang komunidad. Marami pa sa kanilang society. Pero ang kanyang naranasan, gusto niya ang ipa share Amen? Gusto ni Jesus na i-share niya. Kaya sabi niya, huwag ka nang sumama sa akin. Meron na akong 12 disciples eh. Sapat na to. Sapat, sapat na itong labing dalawang to na sakit ng ulo. <laughs> at pasaway. Huwag ka nang dumagdag. Bumalik ka na sa iyong pinanggalingan at sabihin mo, ginawa ko sa iyo. Pinalaya kita, kinahabagan kita, ginawan kita ng Himala. Amen? And this man, now that he has a purpose and a direction and a calling, is so happy to do it. And he went back and testified and told about Jesus to his people, to his own people. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen po ba? Amen. Kaya nga po yan ang dahilan kung bakit tayo, we are so encouraged to evangelize. Why? Because people need Jesus. Nobody no one else would tell them about Jesus. Wow! Sino po ang asahan natin magsasabi sa kanila tungkol kay Jesus? Si Duterte? Sino po ang asahan natin magsabi sa kanila tungkol kay Jesus? Amen! Yung mga politiko? Sino? Yung mga mayor? Yung mga governor? Hindi! Sila nga kailangan nila si Jesus. Kahit na sila ay nasa influential at power, wala po sila kakayanan. But in whose hand does liberty reside in our hands, the children of God? Tayo lang nakakalam eh. We are the only ones who know, amen, that Jesus can set us, can set people free. Amen po ba? Amen. And so this man had found a, a new purpose, a new direction, and a new calling on his life. So verse 20, So the man went away, and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Saan po siya pumunta? He went back to the Decapolis. Deca means ten. Ten cities. He went through all the ten cities telling people about Jesus. He took it upon himself. The responsibility of going through the ten cities. Deca. Decapolis, 10 cities to speak about Jesus, to preach about Jesus, to tell people about Jesus, what he has done in his life. Amen? Amen, Amen po ba? Amen. Amen. And we are no better than this man. We have the same purpose. We have the same calling. We have the same dedication. We have the same destiny. We have the same direction. Amen po ba? To tell people what Jesus has done in our lives. Amen? And we don't have a mic to do. Hindi natin kailangan ng microphone para gawin yun. Hindi natin kailangan ng banda para gawin yun. Amen? Sa simple ang pag-share mo ng Word of God sa kaklase mo, sa kapitbahay mo, sa customer mo. Amen? Sa kaibigan mo, sa kapamilya mo, sa igsuon mo, sa kabsat mo. It is enough. Amen? Your heart is enough to be able to share Jesus. Amen po ba? Amen. The same purpose, the same calling, kailangan po natin tanggapin. Amen? Because there are many out there who need Jesus just like this man. There are many out there who are possessed by the devil. Demoniacs, legions of demons are possessing them. They may not be unruly, maring hindi siya nagwawala. Pero simple lang yung pagiging, ano nila, pagiging possess nila. Amen? Amen? Yung bari, hindi sila yung mga nasa kalsada. Amen? Maaring nasa ano nga sila eh, nasa Malacanang nga sila eh. Pero demon possessed sila. Legion. 
ang pumupusis sa kanila. Amen po ba? Maaring nasa seat of power nga sila. Eh. They, don't have, they don't have to be on the street, you know, running around naked just like this demonia because some of them have legions in them but they are in power. Yun nga ang delikado eh. They are in power and they are using that power to kill people. They are using this power to murder people. They are using this power to oppress people. They are using their power to let people suffer and struggle. Amen? Because they have legions in them. And si, ka, si, ano po, uh, what, ano po ang dahilan para sila makakalaya? Kagaya po ng demonyak na ito, the power is in our hands. There are many people out there who are self-destructive every day. Amen? There are many people out there who are trying to kill themselves because they are in misery. They are like the, living in the tomb, living in darkness, living in misery and struggle. Amen? And we have the power to set them free because we be, nasa atin po ang pangalan ni Jesus. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen po ba? Yes. Amen. Ngayon, maaring, maaring meron tayong makilala na ganito. Ipag-pray mo, puntahan mo. One day, puntahan mo po yung, yung, mga, yung mga taong yan. Maaring hindi yung makilala natin, kundi tayo mismo. We are oppressed. Something is going on in our mind na kung minsan parang gusto na natin mag-give up. We are tortured. I don't know what that is. You are condemned. Maaring your self-worth has been taken away because you've been through something painful, an experience that has stripped you of your dignity. But there is hope in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus wants to set us free. Jesus wants to heal us the pain in our hearts. Kagaya po nang nangyari sa demonyak na to. All his life, he never thought that one day he could be set free. Because all of his life, he was living in a tomb. He was living in a tomb. But now, no living in the tomb. Amen? Because the chains have been set free. Not before, nobody can subdue him. But now he is totally subdued. He is totally at peace. He is totally sitting beside Jesus, clothed in righteousness having the right mind, having the sound mind. Amen? Tayo po nga tayo mo po. Sa oras na to, isipin mo, do you know somebody who is like this man from Gadara? Who is in pain? Who is living in darkness? Who is living in misery? Who is cutting his body with stones? Who is oppressed and possessed and depressed. Do you know somebody who has been stripped of his dignity or her dignity or self-worth because sapagkat siya ay binalasubas, binaboy ang kanyang pagkatao. At ang hirap bumangon. Ang hirap bumangon. Ang hirap ibalik yung respeto sa sarili. Kapatid, huwag kang mawawala ng pag-asa sapagkat kagaya ng demonyak na ito from Gadara who has been practically living his life in the tomb, one day he was set free. One day he experienced the love of God. One day he was forgiven by God and the legion of demons was brought out of his life sent to the pigs and drowned forever. Every day they pass me by I can see in their eyes empty people filled with cares
to fear Laughter hides their silent cries Only Jesus hears People need the Lord
name of Jesus, we can set people free. In the name of Jesus, we can save people from dying, from oppression, from demon possession. And in this place, Jesus, God will commission each and every one of us to take on the cattle, the responsibility of letting people know there is Jesus who can save, who can set people free. Kurabasya kataka. At sa oras na to, matagal mo bang kinalimutan ang calling mo? Alam mo, tinawag kami pangilista. Alam mo, tinawag ka prayer warrior. Alam mo, tinawag ka para maglingkod sa Panginoon but you have been negligent. Pinabayaan mo, tinakbuhan mo, hindi mo ginawa. Sa oras na to, tayong lahat ay magsisi at magbalik loob sa Diyos. Ikaw sa nanonood ngayon, naglamig ka ba sa tawag mo? Have you been amiss of your duties? Have you been remiss of your responsibilities? Now is the time, repent! You have been so cold. Huwag look warm on your calling. At ang sabi sa'yo ng Panginoon, repent and go back to your calling. Pura ba siya ka na karabakanda? Sa oras sa lihi na, tawagan ka ng Diyos, balikan mo ang tawag mo. Go back to your calling. Balikan mo ang sabi ng Panginoon. Pura ba siya ka karabakanda, rabakanda? Because God needs you to propagate His word share His word. Kiara Masyaka Takara Bakanda.
kinakahabagan at kinakaawan ka ng Diyos, ibinabalik ka niya ng, sa tawag niya. Sa tawag ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. God is making you home. Receive the grace of God. Receive the love of God. Receive the mercy of God. It's been torturing you. You cannot sleep at peace at night. You have insomnia. You have all kinds of negative thoughts and oppression in your mind. I say unto you, be set free in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit to come out of you in the name of God. And in the name of Jesus, I set you free in Jesus' name. Oppressing spirit, binding spirit, depressing spirit, possessing spirit. I command you to get out of G in the name of Jesus. Get out of that person. Get out of that mind. Get out of that woman in Jesus' name. And I speak unto you, healing. I speak unto you, liberty and freedom. I speak unto you, complete deliverance in the name of God. Shikarabakanda rabakanda. Reaching out, Lord. Reaching out, Lord. Lord, I have you. Yes, I have your love. I have your love to overcome. Lord, I have your love. 
in our family. We bind in the name of Jesus. We put the chain on all the legions of sickness and disease upon our family. Ano nga ng mga demonyo yes na nagumahawa at kumukotrol sa inyong mga pamilya where it is a curse from generation to generation. Take over it in the name of Jesus. Find it now. You have the power. Yeah. 
says, God reigns over the nations and God is seated on his holy throne.
Last week, nagpa-X-ray si Jay kay Dr. Raweng nang hindi siya ng request para kasi yung ubo niya is 4 to 5 months already, hindi pa natatanggal. So, sabi ko, pagdating natin dito, magpa-X-ray siya. So, yung X-ray result niya is um, may nakitang mass sa right right side ng kanyang lungs. So, hindi sure si Dr. Raweng kung ano yon or mass or um, water. So, ni-repair niya kami sa lung center kay Dr. Layaw. And then, um, nung nandun na kami, hindi rin sure si Dr. Layaw kung ano yun, kung mass or water. Tapos, um, tinanong siya kung ilang buwan na yung ubo niya, matagal na raw. Tapos, pag ubo siya, grabe. Yung parang, ma ano siya, ma parang hindi natitigil. And then, after yun, um, pina second ano kami ng CT scan. Um, pagkatas ng x-ray CT scan. Tapos, uh, in-schedule kami ng CT scan kinabukasan. Tapos, Tuesday yun nagpa-check up kami. And then Wednesday, CT scan. So, sabi ko, uh, tatawagan ko si Pastor para ipag-pray tayo. Or si Mama Ging. Si Mama Ging po, busy po siya. Um, kaya, um, Wednesday morning, 8 a.m., tinext ko si Pastor. Sabi ko, Pastor, bisig na po ba kayo? Pwede po magpa-pray. <laughs> Tapos, hindi ko akalain na tatawag siya agad-agad. Tapos, sab sabi ko sa ano, kasi po, Pastor, nakita si X-ray ni Jay na may mass po siya or water. Hindi po sure si Dr. Layo. So, ngayon, magpapa, ano po kami, magpapasitis ka, pwede po magpa-pray. So, pinag-pray naman po ni Pastor si Jay. Um, pero Tagalog po. <laughs> Naka-speaker, hindi maintindihan ni Jay. Pero okay lang po yun. Hawak ko yung kami ni Jay habang si Pastor nagpe-pray. Inspire ko po. Tapos, pagkatapos namin mag-pray, it's, ano, sabi ni Pastor, sige, magpa-exer, magpa-cities ka na kayo, wala na yan. Panatag na yung loob. Tapos, ayun, yung, nagpa-cities ka na kami, and then, kinabukasan, siguro, uh, Friday na namin kinuha. Gusto nyo daw, yung pagkakuha na namin, um, tingkat ako kasi walang mas, tsaka walang water. Kaya, iniisip ko, sabi ko, baka mag, Kasi may outdoor fellowship tayo. Ayaw ko magbantay sa hospital. Kasi tinanong namin kay doktor. Sa so, doktor, kung paano po pag may water, tatanggalin natin yan. Gusto mo ba magpa-admit? Sabi ganun. Tapos hindi namin po sinagot mo na yung question na yun. Tapos kapag, pa, pag, kapag mas naman po, ano po gagawin? Iba biopsy kung cancerous. So, walang water, walang mas. Kaya laki ng pasasalamat ko kay Lord. Kasi hindi kami mag spend ng mahabang oras sa sa ospital kaya kaya ayun ang um, sabi ko po sa kanya mag love, mag love offering siya sa lingkod ng Diyos and kasi um hindi man po kabayaran ng prayer yon yung love offering na yon is um um yung thank you ano yun eh um, mahalaga din yon pero yung love offering is um part ng trabaho ng lingkod ng Diyos ang ipag pray tayo Pero sabi ko sa kanya, full time sila. Wala silang trabaho. Kung baga, yun ay parang pasasalamat natin. Doon may papakita yung pasasalamat natin sa mga lingkod ng Diyos. Instead na mag-thank you, mag-thank you tayo, maputi yun. Pero kailangan po nila yung support na din po natin para ipagpatuloy po nila yung kanilang mga working trabaho nila. Kaya yung pinagpapasalamat ko po kay Lord talaga at sa lingkod ng Diyos na binigyan niya po kami ng time at pinag-pray niya si... si Jay at um, himala po talaga ng Lord yun sa buhay na sa buhay ni Jay kaya sa just lang po ang kapurihan ayun ibabalik ko lang po yung papuri at pasasalamat sa Panginoon kasi po si Lord hindi po siya siya po ay tumutupad sa kanyang mga pangako ayun kasi um, isang araw <laughs> eh. isang araw sa buhay ko ang Panginoon ang usap sa akin Sabi niya sa akin na yung sasakyan ko kapag napuno ko raw ng maraming kalulawa, sabi niya sa akin, papalitan niya raw ng mas malaki. Sabi ko, di natuwa naman ako. Sabi ko, okay Lord. Tapos sabay may tanong sa isipan ko, paano, paano mapapalitan? Kasi di ba ang way ni Lord hindi katulad ng way ng tao? Tama po ba? So sabi ko, Lord, sabi ko, paano kaya ito mapapalitan? Di ba? 
Tapos sabi ko, kasi kapag may isang bagay na napamahal sa'yo, parang ang hirap i-let go, di ba? Kahit nga tao, di ba? <laughs> Pag napamahal sa'yo, may hirap i-let go, di ba? May mga bagay din tayo na mahirap i-let go. Sa so, isip-isip ko, parang hindi ko siya kaya ibenta. Di ba? Tapos, nangyari, may nangyari, di ba? Naaksidente na hindi inaasahan. So, total wreck yung sasakyan, si Rasha, mas malaki yung magagastos kaysa ipapagawa. ba diba? Pero, ako, walang nangyari sa akin, si ako. So, um, sa, sa unang sasakyan na binigay sa akin ni, ni Lord, ang um, nireveal niya sa akin is, um, parang, parang practice, ano, <laughs> stage of practice sa maliit na sasakyan. So, ayun, nung nangyari yung aksidente na yon yung sitwasyon na yon hinanap ko yung kalooban ni Lord. Ay, yung dahilan kung bakit nang, nangyari yung bagay na yon at bakit kailangan ko ma-experience yung bagay na yon di ba Kasi hindi talaga makakalimutan yun eh. Yung, kala mo, end of the world na. <laughs> di ba Sa paligid mo, magulo. Kasi nga, ano eh, ilang sasakyan yung nadamay sa aksidente na yon Ayun, napakabuti talaga ng Diyos dahil pinalitan niya na mas malaki yung sasakyan ko. Amen? Tunay nga po ang Panginoon tumutupad sa mga pangako niya kung gagawin natin ang kanyang um, kalooban sa buhay natin. Kasi yung sasakyan na maliit na yun. Kung papansin yung maliit siya pero siksikan talaga kami sa loob. Tapos pag marunod ako sa sa kupang, kailangang mag, ano, mag-commute yung mga tagapagray. So, nadodoble yung gasos namin sa pamasahe, sa gasolina, ayun. Kaya sabi ko kay Lord, Lord, paano nyo kaya itong papalitan? Pero ang Diyos sumasagot sa paraan, paraan ng Panginoon. So, kapag um, napuno ko siya, umaapaw, di ba, yung mga sumasakay sa sakyan, sabi, sabi ko nga, hindi, sampuan to. Kasi kahit limahan siya, marami siyang naisasakay. So, ayun. So, sabi ng Lord sa akin, kapag napuno ko yung sasakyan, papalitan niya na mas malaki. So, tinupad ni Lord yung kanyang pangako. Kasi, Amen. Sa Diyos ang kapurian, dahil ginawa ko yung part ko. Kaya, sa atin lahat, kapag ang Diyos may pinangako, gawin lang natin yung part natin. At tuto pa rin ng Panginoon yan sa mga, sa mga paraan na hindi natin inaasahan. Ayun, to God be the glory. So much love in the kingdom. 